Howdy do, and welcome to Down From The Attic. When Home Alone came out in 1990, it was a surprise hit. John Hughes wrote and produced a film with Chris Columbus under a very modest budget of $18 million, which is not much by any standard, but it went on to be one of the biggest films of the year. The film is still listed as the highest grossing live action comedy ever, and by the time its run in the theatres ended, it was third in total world gross, behind E.T. and Star Wars. The film was a huge success and has become a staple of Christmas time viewing. It was unsurprising that a sequel would come, and it too went on to be a classic, even if it followed many similar beats to the original. I still love both of these films, they're timeless in my opinion. The characters are all great, the heart is still there, and I still find it funny after seeing it about a hundred times. However, me, much like every other kid who watched the film back in 92, watched gog-eyed at the fancy, almost sci-fi looking Walkman Kevin used throughout the film. What was this thing? It had a microphone built in? That's fantastic! Where can I get one? Mom? I know what I want for Christmas. We live in an age where product placement in films is pretty much to be expected, sometimes subtly, such as actors using the latest mobile phones, to really abundant and in-your-face advertisement which pretty much screams, GO BUY THIS NOW! However, in the case of The Talk Boy and Home Alone 2, the film needed a Walkman recording device for certain jokes and certain plot points, so they created a dummy, a non-functional prop. But man, did it look cool. A clever marketing strategy had the Talk Boy feature prominently in the film to ramp up the interest in it. The Talk Boy hit stores one week after the film's debut, and was one of 1992's big Christmas must-have toys. My brother and I were lucky enough to get one each, and here's mine. It's seen better days, it's a little bit battered, but it still works great. You can see I love this thing, it's scuffed, it's grubby, it was used regularly. The cassette player came in a Home Alone 2 emblazoned box with a cassette that had music and quotes from the film. A pretty novel idea and a great way to keep the film enduring on after you left the theatre. Remember, these were the days where a film going on to VHS might take 9 months up to a year, not the 3 months it takes nowadays to land on Blu-ray. So, for most people watching and not knowing, what the heck is it? Well, it's a cassette player first and foremost. With the standard functions there, play, fast forward, rewind, stop and record. You can opt to listen through the built in speaker which was quite novel for the time for a Walkman or use headphones in the jack. There were no headphones provided however. You can listen to your cassette tapes on here, music, books on tape, yeah remember them. It was neat. The design of the unit was to be handheld. Your hand would slip around the back with easy access to the buttons on top and your thumb near the on-off switch. Holding this now, it feels good, very ergonomic. The grip conveniently acts as a nice stand for the Talk Boy too. However, the fun came from... the microphone. Putting in a blank cassette, you can extend the telescopic microphone out. I don't think this ever made a difference to the actual recording. I think it was purely to get the mic away from the whirring of wheels in the Talk Boy, though this is very minimal. Extended or contracted, you could record. Record stuff off the radio, your friends talking and telling jokes, snoop around and record conversations, tell stories. The neat thing with Talk Boy is that you can replicate the slowed down tape sequence in the film. The on off switch has a slow function that plays the tape at 75% speed, so your voice gets pitched down. It was amusing to listen to female artists in this mode, suddenly they sounded a lot more manly and deep. I also figured holding in the fast forward and play at the same time allowed you to speed up your voice. With the chipmunks being a popular at the time, this was very funny as a kid. Between the movie prop and the commercial unit, there's a few subtle differences. The prop variant had a much longer microphone, and the battery compartment hinged. I always wished that mine did this, as there were periods where mine would go missing for months and then turn up in a box of Lego or a board game. Taping down the batteries is never fun. The buttons were positioned slightly differently for ease of use, and the logo moved to the top left of the cassette door, rather than the bottom central. These are all minor things, and as a replica, it holds up fantastically. You'd only spot these things if you were looking for them. Tiger Electronics also released a Talk Girl, which was just a pink recolour of the standard Talk Boy. There were a few other recording devices that used the Talk Boy name too. The Talk Boy Tick Talker, which was a watch, and the Talk Boy FX Plus, which was a pen. Both of these sucked, to be perfectly honest. The pen was the size of a rolling pin and sounded terrible, as did the watch and both would eat through batteries. With the advent of smartphones and MP3s, the Talk Boy and its functions are rendered fairly redundant, but I've held on to this for pure nostalgia more than anything. It reminds me of Six Weeks Holidays, playing out and listening to Smash Hits and Aerosmith, borrowing cassettes off my dad to hear them slowed down, goofing around with my brother and friends recording things. Like most people these days, my music collection is all MP3. In fact, I carry around a lot of it on my phone these days. 
But it's just fun to stick a cassette into this thing and have it playing in the background for pure 90s kicks. It might be outdated, but it's still one of the coolest looking toys ever in my opinion. I'm going to stick an 80s and 90s mixtape into this thing. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you again soon. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you again soon.